Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining with us uh, during this tough time, and we hope uh, you all are fine and safe. So uh, we welcome you all uh, to the webinar series on WSO2 Enterprise Integrate. Today, we are talking about migrating to WSO2 Enterprise Integrator version 7. So uh, I'm Melinda Pereira, uh, Associate Technical Lead from Enterprise Integrator team, and I would like to introduce my colleague, Megalingam Nerothipan, Senior Software Engineer, also from Enterprise Integrator team. So uh, before starting, we would like to share some information about the webinar arrangements. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can submit uh, at any time and we will be answering as much as possible at the end of the webinar. And uh, then also this webinar will be recorded and it will be available along with slides uh, in the official web page and you can watch in case if you missed the webinar. And, uh, and also, uh, if we are unable to uh, answer your questions uh, during the time we have, uh, we will be emailing back with the answers to you also. And uh, also, uh, you can join our Slack channel. So uh, uh, you can join our Slack channel and uh, ask uh, any question you have in there. Okay. So. Uh, Let's uh, go through the agenda. First, uh, we discuss evolution of enterprise integration, which we discuss about integration styles, how enterprise architecture involved with time trends, and how WS2 keeps on improving products to cater those changes. So you can get idea motivate idea about our motivation uh, behind the involvement involvement of the enterprise integrator. Then we go through brief introduction to enterprise integrator seven and jump straight to micro integrator and discuss about its key features and improvements. After that, we will discuss micro integrator uh, uh, of migrating the to the enterprise integrator seven and we discuss when to migrate, how to migrate, and how you can plan your migration. Also, we, if you are already ESB or EI user, you can get idea whether you really need to migrate to EI7 or not. And at the end, we will share our roadmap of the WSO2 micro integrator. So uh, let's discuss about the evolution of the enterprise integration uh, enterprise integration allows different applications to work together to produce a set of unified functionality if you can build a standalone application that does not depends on or not needed to collaborate with any other application then you can avoid entire integration story but reality is even in small scale organizations uh, has multiple applications working together to provide better service to their store stakeholders if you look at some characteristics of a uh, good integration so a uh, good integration allows loose coupling between applications and allow both application to evolve without affecting each other to achieve this we have to design interface allowing us to change without breaking the dependent applications. In case of change uh, is needed, uh, it should be able to achieve with small code or configuration change. Also integration between systems should be reliable and should support error handling capabilities if there is some issue occurred. Also, it should be able to change easily with business requirements. Apart from above, uh, it should 
able to develop integration logic easily and technology needs to be agile capable of supporting frequent releases and automation and also uh, ex should have extension extendable uh, ability to connect with proprietary or legacy systems so to cater those uh, enterprise integration styles have evolved over the years from point to point connections to centralized style connected through an esb to distributed architecture adopting microservices architecture with business growth the number of systems integrated has been is increased with time adding unmanageable complexity to point to point style so it faded away with time so in present we have two main proven styles esb style and microservices style so uh, in esb style uh, common uh, esb acts as a common connectivity hub uh, instead of bridging directly one to another the organizations can just connect all endpoints to service bus and then handle the integration within the esb it takes care of service orchestration data transformation protocol transformation etc due to centralized nature organization get ability to perform integration and manage with less effort so uh, if we consider some uh, advantages and disadvantages in uh, esb style uh, in general it has advantages uh, in general it has less operational overhead the amount of resources tools technologies uh, involved for logging monitoring testing are less and simple to deploy and maintain relatively in some cases esb style style can have high performance over msa style mainly because all integrations are deployed in a single server so it can be reused avoiding network hops so we can have low response time to clients it is uh, also simple to horizontally scale uh, by running multiple copies behind the load balancer so uh, if we uh, look at disadvantages uh, and uh, see uh, it is uh, large and complex generally support uh, centralized style the esb should support large number of features to cater large number of user base and large number of teams uh, who are trying to implement different use cases with large number of uh, components features required to cater centralized style the application startup will increase due to initialization requirement of those components and also it needs a center of excellence team to manage middleware layer organizations that heavily depend on integration layer should have dedicated team to maintain improve and govern so they maintain and impose certain standards conventions on the teams that develop integration flows to guarantee central centralized esb runs smoothly due to that it takes some time to take new feature improvement or change from development to production so uh, now uh, let's discuss about uh, microservices style of integration uh, in esb style all integration logic flows through a central esb layer so integration logic uh, in centrally managed and uh, governed by centralized team and this allows centralized standardized and well governed controlled way of publishing integration logic however this advantage in centralization is exactly the kind of disadvantage that micro distributed and linear systems try to solve instead of a centralized architecture the requirement is to have distributed lean system 
that can come and go as needed. With that architecture, instead of waiting for central integration team to build integration logic, the goal is to be able to quickly build your own logic and spin it up and integrate your service with other systems rather relying on another team. In microservices environment, uh, such as micro integrations, can consider as decentralized integration layer, creating composite services, composing, linking, and integrating multiple microservices or backend systems. So uh, microservices style also has their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, when come to advantages, uh, the key principle of microservices is simplicity. Uh, integrating applications become easier to build, maintain when they are split into smaller composable fragments. And microservices architecture tackle the problem uh, of productivity and speed up the release cycles. Uh, different teams can be work on different components simultaneously without having waiting on each other. And the responsibility and the ownership of the team can take care the entire life cycle of the service. And they can maintain their own release cycles and they can, they have at the end, they have end-to-end uh, -end expertise. So they can troubleshoot, solve problems in crisis situations by themselves. This also allow, gives freedom to explore different technologies without restricting on signal governing team. There will be no single point of failure as well. If there is an issue in integration flow or bug may be added within a custom uh, code added uh, in an integration flow, uh, it will affect the entire integration layer. For example, if that, if some integration flow causes out of memory, the central is in central is we style that affect all the integration flows flows deployed. But in microservice style, other integration flows will get not get affected due to isolation. So uh, microservice style also has uh, disadvantages as well, and one is uh, the initial investment that you have to make. Uh, you should, uh, even though it should uh, listed in disadvantages, but in long run, you will get more in return. Uh, for microservices style, you need a lot, lot more uh, infrastructure, technology, uh, special, especially for monitoring, and team should have expertise in wide variety of technologies. Uh, and if you're going for on-premise or hybrid style. And of course, you can offload those, uh, all the uh, heavy lifting to a managed cloud as well. Due to distributed nature, we have to also uh, uh, consider about the security as well, due to all the uh, microservices are connected over the network. Also, uh, if you are migrating from microservices uh, centralized style to microservices style, uh, you have to shift your organization and culture and uh, restructure the team, uh, giving more autonomy and uh, uh, ownership. And this, uh, we, and you cannot actually categorize this as a disadvantage, but uh, uh, there should be more effort to be made when you are migrating from centralized style to microservices style. So uh, to recap uh, what we have discussed so far. Uh, so uh, in the past, we started with monolithic applications and uh, with the time, the system getting complex with involvement uh, of multiple systems and applications in uh, organizations, we adopted a uh, service-oriented architecture. So we are using centralized ESB style integration layer. And uh, now and in future, uh, microservices architecture, uh, we need to adopt a decentralized integration layer. 
capable of micro integrations we cannot compare uh, or claim uh, actually the decentralized uh, integration is better than a centralized integration uh, and vice versa because uh, they are built to serve two types of system architectures if your organization uh, adhere with a uh, service oriented architecture the sh choice should be uh, a centralized integration approach and if you adhere with hardcore uh, microservices architecture you should choose a decentralized integration uh, to get all the benefits out of microservices architecture so uh, ws so to uh, cater both worlds with our integration solutions for uh, some long time now so uh, you can see that uh, our involvement of uh, the uh enterprise integrator so uh, with time so we have we started with uh, esb uh, with centralized for centralized deployment for service oriented architecture and then we packaged all the integration related product into single distribution called enterprise integrator and we started with it from 600 version and uh, after that to support uh, micro services style we have uh, implemented a lightweight version of esb called micro integrator and added it as a profile to the enterprise integrator 630 so uh, with from that we st uh, served uh, and we are uh, providing two series uh, ei 6x series and ei 7s series for uh, EI6X series for mainly for centralized uh, deployments and EI6X series for uh, decentralized deployments. So currently in the latest uh, versions that we have released uh, for 6X series is EI660 and for uh, 7X series, we have released uh, WS2 micro integrator 110 under EI7 umbrella. So uh, let's uh, go through uh, what is uh, EI7 and micro integrator. So uh, there are uh, it's an umbrella project of two runtimes mainly uh, micro integrator, which is known as WS2 micro integrator version 1.1.0 and uh, streaming integrator. So the current release version uh, is 7.0.0 and we have developed it targeting microservices style deployments so the motivation uh, behind uh, of uh, developing the micro integrator was uh, uh, while we are having a uh, esb 6x series uh, focusing on centralized uh, esb style and deployment and we needed a lightweight esb to cater microservices style deployment. So uh, the lightweight distribution of ESB uh, or EIESB profile has been developed and also giving uh, rich container native features. So don't worry if you are using a EI6X. Uh, in the CI, e, uh, EI6X series also we have the same container native features, same as uh, EI7. So uh, let's see now uh, about micro integrator and its key features. So uh, Nirotipan will uh, carry on from now. Uh, thank you, Milinta. Now let's have a look at the key features of micro integrator. So moving on to the next slide. So as the first key, key feature, we have the lightweight distribution, that is the distribution size. And then we have a lesser startup time for the micro integrator. Uh, then come an amazing feature, single file based configurations. Uh, we will be looking into each of them individually. Then we have this immutable nature for the artifacts. Then we have file system based registry, CLI tool and monitoring dashboard 
and finally we have integration studio support for the seamless artifact development and deployment now let's have a look at each of these topic individually first thing is light based distribution so as melinda has already stated the, our key motivation behind developing micro integrator is to target the container native deployments so when it comes to container the distribution size is crucial so our micro integrator size is around 130 megabytes and we are still working on even further reducing that so uh, if you, if you wonder how this helps in container deployments so in order to in container deployments the resource is a significant thing so we have to have we can't waste simply waste resources so we need to go for a lesser distribution size and also if you are deploying in some containers you are going to do multiple docker pools so builds and stuff so that should if it's if the distribution is bulky it will take a less too much of time that's why we have made the distribution size a little then comes the next feature the startup time so if you see the micro integrator it starts around four seconds uh, nearly less than four seconds so again this is crucial in the container world so say if you have a container deployed and if you have less traffic there is no need to have two servers running at the same time so at the time when the traffic increases that is when you have high load only you have to auto scale so when you auto scale you should be able to accept the traffic as soon as possible you can't be waiting for minutes to accept the traffic so at that time the startup time is much important then there's something called high availability in container deployments so ideally when a port goes down the other one should come up immediately to other one should come up immediately to fill that gap so in that thing also the startup time is crucial there and the next feature is the one which i told is single file based configurations so if you are familiar with the wso2 stack you will understand all the names on your left the file name all the xml files master data source carbon properties access to synapse etc etc so actually these are the server configuration files where you edit some configurations that is if you want to enable some transport or if you want to add some data so so etc these are the files where you edit those configurations but now with the micro integrator 1.1 release zero release you really don't need to go and edit all these files so all these have strung into a single file called deployment toml so basically what toml is it's a minimal language so it has only few set of minimal configurations and all other default configurations are there in the pack so it's not user doesn't need to be aware of that so say ideally if you want to change some configuration uh, in our next slide we have an example for this so if you see here if if the user wants to enable m term so ideally what he should have done earlier is he should go to the access to xml and at the parameter as enable m term true but now if you want add that thing you have to add it in the terminal and it will take care of handling those parameters underlying the same applies for other parameters other files as well carbon xml snaps properties etc etc so you can go through our documentation on how to handle all these things so but the key thing here to note is everything has come into a single configuration file so that you don't really need to go and edit multiple files okay now moving on the next feature we have is immutable artifacts so the, the main concept in container deployments is build once and run everywhere that is once you build something it should be immutable that is immutable in the sense it shouldn't change at the runtime the artifacts shouldn't change at the runtime so 
that is out of the box supported in the micro integrator which is a key thing for ms style deployments so here what we are doing is you can create a, your own carbon application and you can have the docker base image from the docker hub and in the integration studio combining both of them you can create a docker project and with that you can create a kubernetes project in the integration studio itself and deploy it to the kubernetes cluster so this integration studio is the one which provides you the seamless integration from your development up to the deployment this is a, another tool which comes as an for the micro integrator actually it's available for all, all the enterprise integrator and it works with micro integrator as well moving on the next thing we have in our list is file system based registry so again if you are familiar with the wso2 product stack uh, you will know what the registry is but never mind so basically what the registry is 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 something where we store all our configurations not all uh, that is like we store most of the configuration like runtime configurations like artifacts and things so in wso2 world the registry is divided into three main partitions like local registry config registry and governance registry so what matters for us is config and governance because local registry is somewhat local to only to the particular node so what are the information we store in the registry snaps artifacts that is you can store some sequences endpoints visitors scripts local entries and etc then you can store some task runtime data actually that is not you that is the server is storing something so you don't really need to worry about that then the synapse secure wall comes there then these these artifacts are earlier it was in the rdbms based system now we have moved them to the file system base so if you have something in the system config path ideally it will go to the micro integrator home registry config so ideally it will be created as a file there and you can go there and open up and see now moving on now let's see how this registry works say you have a simple resource car file here and inside that you have a re registry resource called resource file.xml and its path is conf custom payloads resource file xml that is it should go to the configuration registry and should reside in custom payloads folder so how that's mapped in the micro integrator is it will it will first go to the registry root of the micro integrator config config and then inside that there will be folder structure called custom payloads and this resource file xml will stay up there the same thing applies for governance registry as well so the beauty of this thing is you really don't need an rdbms based database to deploy your system so to start your system you really don't need a database you can just start up with the file system based registry now moving on we have the cli tool and monitoring dashboard so as we earlier said the micro integrator is very lightweight and it's just a runtime so in order to view the artifacts which are deployed inside the server you have a command line interface tool and also the monitoring dashboard so let's have a look at them individually first thing is the command line interface tool so ideally you can run this tool and connect to the micro integrator server instance and retrieve the artifacts and stuffs what are the things which are deployed there and what's their state and etc etc so ideally it has a jwt based authentication and you have to log in first and then retrieve the stuffs so here you can see some example commands so you can view all the artifacts you can list down all the artifacts individually and go through them now moving on we have the dashboard micro integrator monitoring dashboard so if you're still not happy with the cli tool and if you want to have some visuals there we still have the dashboard there 
so uh, this is basically list down all the artifacts in, on the list you can see what are the artifacts which will be listed there and you can go through each and every artifacts and view them so in the next slide you can see we can view all the endpoints here here all the endpoints are shown and if you click on one endpoint you can see it will show up all the endpoint details like endpoint address source view configurations and stuff from this you can figure out the endpoint urls and thing and then again we have another example for the proxy services view this is more or less same as the one i explained for the endpoints so almost all of the artifacts have such view you can go through each of them and view them okay now we have seen what are the key features of the micro integrator now is the time to decide when we should migrate so ideally at by this time you should have an idea what are the key features what are the advantages of microservice architecture and things so we, you should have an answer for this question but we have identified two main scenarios where we sh you should try migration to the micro integrator first thing is when you are ready to adopt a microservice oriented architecture so that was our main aim behind micro integrator so we have developed micro integrator targeting the ms style so if you are ready to adopt that you should try out micro integrator then again the second thing is if you still want to be in a centralized architecture but you want to move to cloud but then you really need a lightweight solution so to cater that requirement also micro integrator is a best choice so you can try the micro integrator upon that instance also then moving on we have seen when to migrate now is time to decide our migration strategy right so let's have a look first thing is if you are deciding on the migration strategy you have to define the necessity of the migration so you have to analyze the technical score and you have to list down all the gains and risks so once you analyze and list down all the gains and risks only you know what you are going to gain by this migration so only if the gains outweigh the risk and if you feel that it's worth a migration you should probably try it so when you are analyzing it you have to consider everything you should you should not be focused only on the present you should be thinking about the future what are the benefits i am going to get in the long run if i migrate to microservice oriented architecture style so once you are, have defined the necessity and if you feel that you, you really need to do a migration then let's go to the second step second thing you have to do is you have to sketch a project management plan for migration so you can choose any suitable pattern so for example if you choose a strangler pattern so which is basically ideal to migrate to msa oriented architecture from centralized thing so what strangler pattern defines is you are migrating ps wise that is in the early migration you are replacing the legacy application with the modern application up to a, only a certain small amount then you are replacing it even more and finally you end up with only modern application that is like you gradually develop it and finally come to the msa style so that's what strangler pattern defines then next thing you have to consider in the migration is you have to monitor the process regularly and resolve the issues so once you start the migration it's not uh, correct to expect that everything will go smoothly and will end up in one or two days so you have to, there might be user configuration issues there might be unexpected things happening so you should monitor all of them regularly and you have to keep on resolving the issues of course you can contact wso2 wso2 support on these matters if you encounter anything then again most important thing is you should adhere to the timeline when you are migrating in the previous slide you should adhere to the timeline when you are migrating so what we have observed is many people start migration but it will be not not that end or this end it will be hanging somewhere around in the middle 
so you should adhere to the timeline and you should make sure that you finish it up as planned and finally you need to test everything and document so we might have expected something and migrated to something and finally we end, we would end up somewhere so ideally it's the responsibility of the project management team to test everything that they are expected output is achieved by the migration okay now let's have a look what we should migrate so what we should migrate really is a context sure so it depends on where you are migrating from if you are migrating from different vendor or whether you are migrating from ea6x to ea7s micro integrator or esp profile to micro integrator it depends on that then again you can break down the migration into four main areas first thing is environment or deployment migration that is you might have something related to the environment then you might have something related to the configuration configuration server level changes then something related to the data so you would have have some data in your past deployment and you will want to run the services again with the same data then finally the artifact migrations the integration artifacts and things now moving on uh, milinda will be discussing about the environment or deployment migration and some more topics uh, thank you nirodh bhai uh, so uh, when we migrating uh, environment so where the micro integrator resides uh, serving the request so uh, there can be different uh, uh, situations so you may be migrating from a different vendor uh, to a micro integrator with microservices type so in that case uh, so your product uh, the product x uh, maybe uh, resides in a vm based deployment so in that case uh, you have to ensure that uh, you have a, a proper container uh, friendly environment to your in your environment and if your uh, product x is already deployed in a container based or if you are already have container based uh, system you can uh, directly start thinking about my mi migrating to uh, ws2 micro integrate so uh, definitely uh, the your environment should uh, cater a uh, container based uh, based uh, infrastructure uh, to support docker and we should have some monitoring so those things uh, we are going to discuss in a later slide and uh, you may be migrating from uh, ESB or already WS2 products, ESB or WS2 EI. So in that case, you have to consider on migrating that uh, in e ESB and EI is developed for centralized uh, style and it has shared network file system that mounts to share artifacts. And also it has a registry DB. So as we discussed earlier, uh, you have to uh, move this registry DB uh, to uh, to uh, file based registry. So if you are going with uh, totally with uh, uh, microservices architecture style, you have to move those registry artifacts to a, a registry project and then move it to a C app and burn that C app to micro integrator image. And uh, Similarly, uh, you don't need uh, of, uh, of a net network file share and mount it to artifacts directory because you are going to honor a immutable nature. And also, uh, you may be migrating from VM-based deployment to VM-based micro-integrated deployment. So if you like to use micro-integrator as centralized ESP, uh of your organization then you have to mount uh the the artifacts artifacts and as well as the uh file based registry to a network file system so 
uh, all get synced with uh, artifact mount and uh, artifacts and the changes in registry uh, get synced to all the other nodes so uh, those are the uh, main things that you think about when migrating uh, the environment so uh, if you are going to uh, totally with uh, micro services architecture style uh, in that case your infrastructure should consider should contain all these uh, uh, abilities so you definitely need a container orchestration system like docker swarm or kubernetes openshift even uh, aws ecs as well so mesos and other uh, you can use any kind of uh, container orchestration system and also if you are going with the uh, msa style you definitely must have a ci cd pipeline so to build the uh, uh, artifacts creating the image and deploying uh, kind of so you can use for that jenkins bamboo and also you must have a version control link system you can use git or svn uh, for that and uh, one of the must have a, a requirement if you are moving to microservices style is central log processing and visualization system so uh, in container world uh, containers come and go it uh, spinned up spin down and uh, everything get changed and it those things uh, doesn't persist any uh, artifacts or files in the file system so in that case you need to publish all the logs in case if you got issue you have to uh, troubleshoot it and all that you need definitely need logs so in that case you need centralized log processing like elk stack and also definitely you need to monitor containers health uh, memory usage cpu usage like so you can use prometheus and also you may need to uh, monitor the uh, service uh, calls that served by the micro integrator for that you can use uh, enterprise integrator analytics as well okay so uh, this is kind of an example that uh, the uh, showing that how we can distribute uh, deploy uh, micro integrator in kubernetes so you can uh, have auto scaling features uh, by using a uh, pod auto scaler and matrix server available in uh, kubernetes and also you can deploy uh, enterprise integrated analytics uh, for service uh, to monitor service calls and get statistics and kubernetes dashboard uh, is useful for uh, monitor your containers uh, and also the prometheus also very useful to uh, monitor the health cpu usage memory and all that okay so uh, now let's uh, move to uh, what we should migrate uh, uh, i mean con configuration context so uh, <clears throat> the uh, as uh, we previously said uh, you uh, we have a deployment normal that uh, has uh, the uh, single file configuration so uh, in, if you are migrating from a different vendor, you definitely need to rethink and uh, uh, modify the deployment term. And if you are migrating from 6x series or ESB, you can uh, observe what have you have configured and map those configurations to uh, deployment term. So uh, data in, if we look at data migration, uh, if you are migrating from uh, EI 6x series, the only uh, persistent layer is uh, registry mainly. Uh, the registry, uh, the DD, DB, uh, registry DB get replaced with a file system. And if you have uh, dynamically changed, so if you have changed uh, added resources from the uh, management console and refer it from the refer it in the mediation flow you have to definitely go through those uh, stuff and move those resources to registry project and then move to a, a creators carbon application package and deploy it and burn it to the micro integrator image so uh, 
you can uh, if you are going for centralized esb style deployment you definitely need to mount the uh, registry uh, where network file system and if you have a uh, dynamic uh, resources that need to be uh, uh, edited system admin can directly uh, edit the files and sync over the uh, get sync over all the micro indicator nodes and so in microservices architecture style if you are honoring uh, you have to honor uh, the the immutability concept so you have to move those registry resources to uh, registry uh, project and then create a carbon application and burn it, the image so now let's see uh, artifact migration so my Yerotipan will continue on with okay so artifacts migration so when we see artifacts migration so all of our integration artifacts that is like synapse artifacts all the carbon applications everything falls under this one so when you are migrating the artifacts you have to again follow some strategy so what we are proposing is you can follow a strangler pattern again so it's like you transform coexist and eliminate that is you transform the artifacts i mean that is like you do stepwise and finally you end up in the new system then before while doing the artifact migration you have to actually break them down so here what we are focusing is migrating from esp style to msa so when it comes to msa you have to break down the integration flows so you can do do a breakdown based on apis services or context that is your apis you might have multiple apis they might have multiple contexts so you have to break them down and separate them individually and again you can break down based on domains or else okay. you can just make a breakdown based on teams with respective ownerships so it's up to your call to decide which is more suitable to break down but it's advisable to break down system into different parts and do a migration then the next thing is in the artifacts migration you have to do the documentations you have to develop documentations and have them ready then the source codes so in the esp style you might have have everything in one source code but when it's come to msa it's going to be splitted so you have to group them accordingly so you have to group all the related steps together that is individual or related steps you have to have them together and some the some of the common steps like connectors custom mediators and templates you can have them as shared modules and have it in a common repository then once you do the breakdown you have to do some assignment for the ownerships so you can assign to sub teams or individuals so ideally there should be an individual or a team with some expertise who should handle the integration flow end to end so it's up to their responsibility to do the improvements maintenance and support that is they should do the cicd continuous integrations and they should deliver it continuously so it's up to them then you have to assign the ownerships and the next thing is when you are adapting a microservice style from a centralized deployment uh, these are the main in the artifacts migration these are the main artifacts you have to do a focus on so why we are emphasizing this is if you are familiar with the scheduled task you would know so basic uh, basically scheduled task is supposed to run periodically and do some work so if you have five no nodes five containers it's it's supposed to run only in one container and do that node because it has to have coordination among the containers currently in the micro integrator 110 the coordination is not available but we are working on that it will be available in the next release so for the moment what you have to do is for the scheduled tasks you have to deploy them accordingly that is you have to you have to divide them separately and deploy in needed containers only so that's for the scheduled tasks but 
the other artifacts like polling inbound endpoints and message processes the underlying implementation of them also relies in the task so you have to consider focus on that also while deploying so if you see this diagram here so uh, how to deploy this task so basically you have to use some container management system for task deployment so all the task based artifacts should be deployed in single instance so if you are doing an artifacts migration on the left you can see some diagram right the, when the request comes it, it will be routed to both ei instances and ideally all the artifacts will be they are in a common place like all the apis and stars and it will go to that common place that is that nfs mount and do the processing and the request will be served but when it's come to the msa style the picture in the right when the request comes the requests are served to each instance but if you see the first two instances we have the apis and proxies those are duplicated ideally you can have the artifacts everywhere but when it comes to the task they are not duplicated and they are residing in a separate container so that's what you have to do you have to deploy them in the necess necessary containers only so that you can have coordination there so i think you are clear about the artifacts migration now let's have a look at the roadmap of micro integrator so as we have said earlier in the roadmap we have few tasks that is hot deployment support so as we told earlier we are focusing on the centralized deployment as well lightweight centralized deployment that is if you are moving to cloud and you still need a lightweight solution and a centralized deployment then again you need the hot deployment so we are working on hot deployment and task coordination support the thing we discussed in the previous slide we need to have coordination among the tasks uh, so we are working on these two things and this will be available in the next release which is uh, tentative around next may then we are again working on the enhancements for the monitoring dashboards so the monitoring dashboard which we showed you earlier have all the basic features you can view them you can list down everything but we are still figuring out what are the improvements we can bring it there to make the user with more to improve the user experience and also we are working on optimizing the startup time and reducing the distribution size which is again going to be crucial in the microservice architecture oriented deployments so that's all for the webinar thank you very much for listening to this now we will be answering the questions uh, as the first question we have something called uh, is there any tool to migrate from ei 6 6 to 7 okay uh, so straightforward answer is no you don't have any out of the box tool but uh, more or less the artifacts are going to be same so if you are doing the migration you don't really need to worry about the artifacts the artifacts which worked in the ei will work in micro integrator but uh, you have to take care of the deployment level changes and you have to handle that yeah uh, uh, then, there is uh, yeah so there is another question uh, uh, is uh, is it mandatory to have a ktest environment in order to work with micro integrator 110 yeah seven so uh, it is uh, not a mandatory actually uh, it's a kind of a, if you are having a architectural change to go with a microservices architecture style uh to cater or uh, totally go with uh microservices then you need uh uh ktest or any contain orchestration environment and if you if you uh go want to go with uh, uh centralized style stick with centralized style then you don't need a ktest environment so you can uh, deploy the micro integrator in uh centralized style as well okay another question we have is 
is adding a DB is handled in Tomel? Uh, the answer is yes. So what you are defining in the master data source XML, you can still define in the Tomel and handle it there. But for the moment, if you see the microintegrator 110, we don't have any database requirements. So you really don't need to worry about that. But the answer is it's still handled and you can do it. Okay. Uh, um, there is another question. Uh, so, uh, that, uh, is it uh, possible to deploy EI6X uh, series in a container environment? Uh, yes. So, you can uh, typically uh, deploy a container environment. So, most users are deployed in a EI6X in container environment. And uh, we also recently in the latest release, we have added container uh, native features to uh, EI6X series as well. Okay, uh, let me read out the next question. Hello, can we expect soon a web interface like the one in WSO2 6X Carbon? to manage message processor, manual creation of artifacts, etc. Et so the answer is uh, you have monitoring dashboard. Uh, we are not going to provide an inbuilt dashboard there. So we are not having to have a distribution which comes with dashboard and the distribution. But the thing is uh, managing message processors is like uh, now we have some API to manage it. So ideally that feature is not provided in the dashboard. That is to deactivate the message processor. We have some API, but the manual creation of the artifacts, uh, we are not going to have it. So uh, even in the 6X series, we are not recommending creating artifacts via the management console. We always recommend integration studio, create it and develop it. So for the dashboard, we will include that message processor feature that controlling that is posing and resuming the task. We will include that feature as an improvement for the dashboard. I think that answers that question. And then. OK, there is one more question. Just now it was mentioned that we can deploy MI within centralized DSP. What would be the benefit of it? OK, so if you are going for for centralized DSP with MI, the whole benefit is uh, you can have a lightweight distribution. So if you are moving for cloud, uh, the distribution size matters. So that's what a, MI is there for centralized ESP style. But if you're still in VM, you can still work with EA6X series. So there are two teams continuously working on both 6X and 7X. So both will be continuously developed and evolved. You can still work on them. Uh, yeah. Um, there is another one. Using the strangler pattern, both EI6X and EI7 microintegrate profile uh, can o coexist in development and production. So, uh, in this, when considering a strangler pattern, so uh, there is a level that uh, we have coexistence, uh, both uh, old uh, old uh, environment that we have, and uh, we, uh, the the new environment that we migrate into. So, uh, in coexisting uh, state, uh, we may serve some. Uh, services or APIs in a uh, old environment and uh, some APIs in new environment. So in, in case of that, your deployment, development and uh, production environment uh, should have uh, same, absolutely same environment. So uh, you, your development and production both should have uh, should have uh, EI 6X and EI 7 and both. You don't, you cannot, uh, it's a kind of a uh, rule of thumb that we are having a, un, uh, 
we are having the same uh, environment in both uh, production and development so both should be same both should be same okay next question is since logs are removed from ai 66 console is log panel available in monitoring dashboard no it is not available in monitoring dashboard as well uh, in the container world uh, as melinda explained in the webinar you need to have some log management system but regarding removing the log console from 66 we are still under discussion and about that feature there's a possibility that it we will bring it back. Then there is another question on which I answered. Does the API allow to reactivate message processors if they get de deactivated? Of course, they do. And uh, you can follow the documentation where we have the steps about how to activate and deactivate. Um, okay, okay, I think sir. we are running out of time and it's time to wrap up. Thank you everyone, everyone for joining. Uh, actually, we will answer the questions which we couldn't answer now. We will answer them by the mail. We will send you an answer by individual mails. And the recordings will be available in the site. Thank you everyone. See you.